There's a passage in the Dhammapada where the Buddha says that you don't go to heaven or to hell because of other people's actions. And yet all too often we find ourselves in our own mental heaven or hell because of what someone else did. But then we're the ones who create that heaven and hell. It's through our own actions that we take what they did, what they said, or even what we think they think, and turn it into our own private heaven, our own private hell. We have to watch out for that. Because if our moods depend on other people's actions, we're in really bad shape. Because there's nothing constant about what they do. The people who are good to us today may not be good to us tomorrow. The people whose opinion we value today may do something really harmful tomorrow. Or people that we look down on today tomorrow may do something really good. You need your own independent spot inside. That's a combination of doing the concentration and also having some discernment. Because the concentration gives you a good place to stay. Your own separate sense of energy, your own separate source of energy. Like in the days of Ayutthaya when the Burmese attacked Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya was able to withstand the siege for a long time because they had their own water and they had their own food inside the walls of the city. So concentration serves as your food and water. You learn how to breathe in a way that gives you some energy, a sense of well-being, even when you're frazzled at the end of the day. You learn how to step back from the mood of your being frazzled and breathe in a way that feels really good, feels really soothing inside, energizing inside. Find when you breathe in, where does it feel soothing? Where does it feel good? When you breathe in, breathe out. If you can't really decide whether it feels good or not, hold your breath for a while. And then when you finally do breathe, it's going to feel good. Well, notice where that spot is that it feels best to make that the focal point of your awareness. And be sensitive to the fact that the body is going to have its own needs, and they're going to change. So you have to be alert to what it needs and make adjustments. And as you get more and more interested in this, you get not only a sense of well-being but the, in the body, but also the mind itself has a sense of ease because it's not running around all over the place. It can rest. Now be careful when you rest not to drift off. You have to be very, very mindful of what you're doing. This is why when the breath gets comfortable, you try to be aware of your whole body. Think of everything from the top of the head down to the toes and everything in between. Try to be aware of that all at once. If you're really fully aware of the body, it's hard to be aware of anything else at the same time. <coughs> Because that awareness is all around. It's not focused just on one spot. If you're focused on one spot, sometimes it's easier to pick up something else as well. It's as if you have one thing in one hand, but your other hand is free. But if you're with the whole body, no hands are free. Not even your feet are free. Not even your ears are free. You can't pick up anything else. When you have this sense of your own independent source of energy, then it's a lot easier to be immune to the ups and downs of other people's actions, other people's moods. But the concentration on its own is not going to do it. You have to also develop some discernment. What is it that makes you want to go out and feed on other people's actions? What is the hunger that you're trying to, trying to assuage? And we can have lots of different hungers that way. And sometimes there's the hunger to look down on other people. And we actually take delight in other people's flaws as we've seen them. Of course, we miss the big flaw in our own selves.
as John Mann used to say, oftentimes we can we can see the sawdust in other people's skin, but we can't see the the big log that's sticking on our own eye. So you have to be careful about that. Other times it's just straightforward. You like to hear them say nice things about you, and they're not. Or you want to see people doing something that strikes you as intelligent, and they don't do it. They do something really stupid. And it means more work for you. Okay, what kind of mood are you going to feed on there? And John Fuang had some good advice. He said, when you see something needs to be done and other people aren't doing it properly, okay, here's your opportunity to make merit. There's one time when he was leading a group of people up to meditate in the jetty on the, the hillside there, and one time said, hey, they got up there and there was garbage all over the area around the jetty. And one of the people complained, how could anybody leave garbage in a place like this? And he says, don't complain about them, just pick it up. This is your opportunity to do some merit. So when you learn how to think in the proper way, that can also liberate you from feeding on other people's moods, other people's actions. So when other people do good, you can see it as sign, okay, there are people in this world who do good, and you get some energy from that. Otherwise, if all you can see are other people's drawbacks, your own goodness gets stale and gets shriveled. You have to see their good points as well. And if they do have good points, you can notice, okay, that's energy for you. Don't be jealous of them. They've got some good. Sometimes they've got some good better than you have. Well, here's your chance to get a good example. One of the people act in ways that are really bad. You can remind yourself, okay, oh, this is what bad actions look like from outside. Maybe I've got some actions just like that. So regardless of what other people do, you've got to learn how to think in ways that help liberate you from being a slave to their actions or making your moods depend on their actions. You have to learn how to develop the right mood to practice, and you need to energize yourself to practice. So your motivation comes from within, and it comes in a healthy way. So to keep yourself from falling to hell or going to heaven over other people's actions, you've got to learn how to separate yourself out. Remember, it's actually your actions that are creating the heaven and the hell. Don't weigh yourself down with hells, and don't don't get complacent about the heavens. There's got to be a point in the mind that can step back from all of these moods and just watch. When the body is energized, when the body is tired, you've got to have that ability just to drop your moods and just watch them. And that's when you find something's even more liberating than a good mood. The ability not to be a slave to the ups and downs of your moods. That's a state of mind that's really worth cultivating. It requires concentration, requires discernment. But it's one of the really basic ways in which we liberate ourselves from being a slave to the world.